Anyway, so you've seen the picture on the uh, slide. You'd be noticing the cave, which is uh, there. This is how we, uh, in fact, evolved as human beings. Earlier, as, as said, this, we started staying in caves. And, in fact, the cave, we went to the cave after we stopped using the spares. Uh, spares, uh, people used to hunt animals and stay as, you know, barbarians and maybe a civilization took place and people started going to the caves. And as we walked into uh, agriculture, then we After we stopped using spares to hunt animals and we went to the caves, then we the lifestyle of human being changed, so then we had more time to think and innovate. So that, that gave us opportunity to create a demo and interact, as you can see in the picture at the lower portion, people in the caves interacting and uh, you know, redefining the thoughts with the paintings. There will still find some uh, cave paintings here there. But how we evolve with the sustainable nature in terms of uh, human evolution is a big thing to ponder. If I start putting my uh, presentation the way Professor Tiwari has explained the importance of sustainable building material to define the way we live, but if I put this equation into DIY, then it might take a very different turn. Because earlier, as human beings, we have been evolving with what we can do it on our own till we invented the machines. That machine, the very machine, what we call, where we had to, we could leave our dependency on the uh, brute force, is the will which we invented. Uh, I don't know why it was invented. And that will gave us that opportunity to put them behind animals so that we could increase the mobility. That mobility gave us that more opportunity to think even beyond our what we could imagine than the very bit which you can see on the right on the left side is a remnant of the water meal which human beings created to have a little better comfortable. Let me put sustainability aspect with the common label of how we interact with architecture. Uh, in my previous slide, in Goa, in my previous slides, from the caves we went to these huts, and from these huts we've been staying in the buildings uh, like this, in uh, metropolises, not in Nepal, you can see, but you see, the, see them in other countries. And as we evolved with the birds, and these wheels were put behind the characters and we got even more mobile and the cycles were invented and we had even more time to think. But, and then they came the steam engine and then they came these cars. So, till, let me put this uh, thing together with a time chart of the global population vis-a-vis wheels. If you see that, till 1880, we were only dependent to the will effort, the brute effort of human power. Then the population, the global population was only uh, 2,000 million. And as we evolved with the birds into cycles and steam engine and these cars and the car which you use now and the AC and these mobiles. See, the population in the explosion, they, they don't they exploded like anything. In 1880, the population, world population was only 2,000 million. And we got into these cars from uh, 19, in the beginning of 1980, uh, there was around 3,000 million people. And then, as we evolved into metal life forms, and the population exploded from 3,000 million in the early 1900th century to 7 billion at present time, and that is going to increase to maybe 2 billion in the next 20, 20 years' time. So, 
the sustainability aspect of our evolution in architecture has a very big impact. And let me put uh, relate this sustainability with the comfort level we create at the same time. So, with the architecture, uh, with the you know the even uh, our effort to innovate, we are becoming more sustainable. But at the same time. That sustainability and that development of you know our comfort table has gained so many uh, negative and secondary effects. I say that as we left the woods and we went, to, we see, started using this uh, fossil fuel or electricity or mainly coal to power our steam engines. Then we started getting this secondary consequences of degradation. So. That consequences of degradation has created a big menace. And now we are trying to get sustainable with how we have been doing things in the past. Now the sustainability has taken a different meaning. You are green, you are sustainable. Because whatever you have produced so far till date has created so much of, you know, nuisance, I should say that. That has been sucking the very elements of the Mother Earth. So, my, my DIY equation to relate the sustainability that takes a very different turn. So, this, let me put how this uh, comfort label is, you know, sucking the ice cell, uh, how it is uh, uh, depleting uh, the very resources we have. Out of total 7 billion world population, I think 20% of the rich world, that is 1.4 billion people, they have all the, you know, comfortable for the cars and the buildings, and they consume nearly 75% of what we produce in the world globally. They use 70% of the energy, and they contribute 75% on carbon emission. No matter how we've been trying to evolve in terms of architecture like uh, Professor Fiawari was explaining with the, uh, you know, that uh, 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 water absorbing jingities in our architecture to, you know, environmental friendly glazing element. But the way we've been evolving with the machines and with the buildings has created uh, a lot of negative impact, I should say. So, and if you see the lower section of the world population, which is, I think it's more than 4 billion, how they survive? They still stay in the huts like that. They still use you know, firewoods to manage their energy, uh, you know, cooking activities. And they still use animals to uh, made the ends meet to plow the field. But, but what we have got from the very essence of comfort, what you call it, we've been offered a mobile, you know, that mobile is there with almost everyone. That's 50% of the world, the poor population of the world. This carry a mobile, you can see the, a beggar in Pakistan using a mobile, uh, while he's still begging. So a farmer in Nepal, uh, you know, using a mobile race, while he is, you know, dragging his cattle in his uh, feet. So, the, this human evolution with the machine has created so much of, you know, what, so many things with which we can pollute the world, but how we can make it, you know, more sustainable and how we can do things which can be an easy solution to people with hardly skills. So, then that comes a very important aspect of doing a DIY. DIY for the mass, not DIY for the people who are in the developed world. Because they might be finding so many different gimmicks on, you know, they say to me, you, you have to stay off the grid. Then you are sustainable. You know, they have been going back to the, you know, this, uh, the way we live in, our people live in villages, in the huts and in the trees. And you know, they start riding bicycles and they're getting the sustenance. But if you see in totality the way the world is being populated, you know, polluted by the way the energy doing this DIY 
DIY has a very, you know, uh, you know very trying to find something which is very easily understood by people at the grassroots level. So let me, okay. So my DIY deals with this one even solar water heater. What we have in the market, what technology has offered us is a parking tube solar, as you see there is a low portion, and a plate solar. And, but there's a bucket in the middle of the picture, you know, but this bucket is something which you keep it in the hot sun. It gets hot and it gets cold at the same time. I still remember when we were not able to that extent, maybe it was 30, 40 years back, my mom used to put some bucket of water outside in the sun for two hours and, you know, he used to have a bath with that bucket of water. And while I was asking my people around, you know, like in the people in the village, they don't even have a bucket of water, how they eat, manage their affairs is a very uh, difficult equation. So, this bucket of water, as you say, the sun energy, even in Tatman, do we get, uh, I think it is 1500 kilowatt hour per square meter energy in the, through the sun. So, so the solar energy has a lot of potential and if and my DIY innovation with this black pipe will change the way we think about energy as you say that the way we get hot water will change for most of the majority of the global population if we can adopt this as a DIY solution for our inner limits. You know, what has happened is, these days the technology has given us so many things which we really don't need to sustain, to go green. But it is giving us so many things which is uh, depleting, which um, has larger potential for a depletion of the essence of our survival. And so let me go to this. I think I must have been able to explain why we need a solution for grassroots level people. DIY solution for hot water heating for grassroots level. Uh, I think I must have been able to explain it in my previous uh, speech. So now let me go into what I have evolved uh, in the last eight years since when I had to move to my new house. Maybe I didn't have that much money too, so I had to do something to manage my uh, hot water in my bathroom. So I evolved a uh, design which was as easy as, you know, it just... Yes, this one, you know, this is the DIY solution for hot water for the majority. You take a black coil of pipe and the two ends, one end goes to the bottom when the water is cold and it gets hot in the sun and this water, very water goes from the top to the storage then. So these are five different models that we bought and the one at the top with the baron is the one I put in G Imagination Challenge back in 2000, uh, 2011 and it was one of the talked about uh, entry there and this had the very sense of you know uh, providing bathing solution for the majority of the people uh, of gold that was the problem see? and this the lower one is the DIY solution which is 100 square feet and the one on the right hand side you see is a portable DIY solar water heater uh, which was shared on CNN Worldwide Network back in April 2012 on how we can go green with very little things we can have. But uh, I, but the, let me explain you a little more on how we produce. We use plastic coils, we use this um, black pipes to do this, but they might be having a potential to, you know, they will last for 100 years, but if these pipes can last for 100 years, that is, and if you manage your energy bills with the same thing, and maybe that is a different way of being uh, getting green also. Uh, 
now, I think I have a, okay. So how this DIY is simple? Let me explain it. I have an example of this flat plate solar on the right hand side and, and, and this is the DIY on the left hand side. Right in the left hand side of this factory store and the DIY is in the left. And in the middle with the oil. You can, if you see this fat plate solar has more than 50 joints and it uses half inch and one inch pipe with so many different accessories. But as you see this DIY solution, you just take oil and pipe and you just join these two ends where the storage tank and your hot water solution is there. And I think since uh, I have some very good video presentation for you to understand how you do it on your own, maybe uh, I'd uh, put the video on for some time so that you'll be able to understand it. If you have need any explanation in the middle, and of course I will videos. So these videos, I have a speaker is also not there, so maybe you will not be able to understand what I am trying to explain you through the videos, but uh, let me put it, uh, you will not be able to stop it also, there is a problem. <laughs> He's also understanding how you do this DIY. So that, you see that the uh, red one is the hot end and the blue one and the lower portion is the cold end of this DIY. And you can see. Okay, this is a sketch of how you do this construction. This is a bag on the section and this is a coil at the concentric coil. You put it in that uh, And this is how we do this. This is a plastic bag we got from mouth. This is a half of a element with two ends. And this is how we do this to make the force in the, in the skeleton stop. And there's a ball there at the top of the barrel and on the side there. And how I insert this onto the steel, uh, the, the accessories to produce this barrel. A storage unit. This is how you get this uh, uh, accessories on this barrel. I think my assistant Bidel is also here. And you see these spots for different, uh, you know, what is important like the system. So this must have given you a very great, very idea on how you do this. So unfortunately, I was not able to present the video. I wanted this. There was no audio system also there. This is how we connect it to the top of the barrel. As the sun gets on this and storage system there. I think I should stop it and move it.
So what we have done with this DIY, we have been able to create a water requirement for our bathroom, water requirement for our kitchen. Do you see if it is post pandemic it's economic, cheaper part of this solution, you know, might uh, you know take people to make uh, you know, many different variations. So we have this bathing solutions and we have kitchen utensils and this can be applied to the restroom. And this uh, DIY can be used as a kiosk for taking in the taking trays. It can be used in the plunge books. And DIY solution, I think, which uh, I could uh, have some you know, flips on there, could give you that little hot water requirement in uh, tropical climates. How this uh, deforestation, that will you know, eliminate deforestation to a very large extent if you can get generate some hot water requirement in the villages. So that we can do with the uh, whatever DIY solution. And we have used this as a room heating solution also in our house. And this can be a substitute for radiant for heating. And this can be a, a solution for uh, water filled glass wall as a heating element into our building. A very effective solution to uh, make the building more sustainable. So I'm really sorry about the uh, video part, which would have been able to give you much uh, bigger uh, aspect of this DIY. I think I should end it here. I'm really sorry about this video part. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Architect, uh, Mr. The